back to the show. Here is a look at the playoff picture as most teams will be wrapping up their regular season games this week. Obviously, Vancouver a little bit behind schedule, but they will finish their season uh, 56 games in when it's all said and done. But most of the playoff matchups are set. There is some movement that can still happen, but most teams have clinched their playoff spot. Only one is left up for grabs. The Montreal Canadiens look to clinch it tonight with a point. So we are going to talk about what's at stake this week. And apparently oh. it's EJ Manning the grill. Yeah, here. it's really a little frightening there with that. Um, I mean, you're giving <laughs> someone a stink eye. I don't know who, if you're yeah. giving you a stink eye or a rupper the stink eye, but. I would never, I would never give you or rupper the stink eye. Okay, good. Never. <laughs> oh, man, I would love I've to. I've seen just... the stink eye from you before. <laughs> not at, I've seen it from you each. But not I'm at not you. Lie. Not at you. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you've yeah, witnessed fair. it in yeah. someone else's direction yeah. for sure. But... but now that you said that. <laughs> you know, anyway. Hey, anyway, go fire up the grill. Let's, let's get it going. Oh, man, I would love to just be outside at a barbecue right now. But uh, we'll just pretend for the sake of this segment. Here is what we're going to do. We're going to look at some things that are at stake in the final week okay. of the season. And we've got a big, big, big game tonight between the Panthers Ooh. and the Bolts. And on the line is home ice advantage yeah. in their first round playoff series. We already know they're going to play each other. But who will have home ice advantage. These teams do not like each other each, no. as we talked about earlier in the show. But how important is home ice for either of, of these squads? Yeah, they'd like to sear that into the into the process tonight. <laughs> no question about it. But uh, I think it would probably be beneficial for Florida to have home ice advantage if they could have it, just because it's a last change situation for them and their veteran coach, Joel Quenville. And good to start uh, in your own building. And you have a certain number of fans in both of these buildings in Florida, so you can maybe get a little energy from that. So I don't know if it matters all that much because these teams, they seem to go after each other pretty good no matter where they're playing. But for me, Rupper, I would say that, uh, you know, maybe the Florida Panthers would benefit a little bit more. And uh, I'll tell you one thing, as long as Sam Bennett is healthy, that guy's been crazy since he's been in Florida, 15 points in 10 games. But I'd give Florida the edge there, Rupper. Yeah, I mean, I, you, home ice is obviously, you, you want to set yourself up for in a normal season because of the yeah. fans for all these different situations with face-offs and last change and all those good things. So you want to set yourself up to have everything in your favor that you can. But just a little little side note here, but what I love that both of these teams, obviously being in the state of Florida, will have the same, should have, right? The same sort of, uh, I guess, a fan allowance at the games where some of the places that we've seen where June 1st were, I think in Vegas, they, they may be up to 80%. So, I mean, you talk about maybe an advantage for some teams in the playoffs if their state has different rules that are allowing more fans to be in the building, if that becomes an advantage for them. But for these two, uh, I, I think that it would be bigger for the, the Florida Panthers just because they haven't been there yet. Yeah. They haven't done that yet as far as going deep. They need everything on their side they can. Home ice is part of that. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think it's a bigger advantage for the Florida Panthers, but I don't think it phases the Bolts if they don't get it yeah. type deal. Uh, but by the way, Bennett and Montour both out tonight. Yeah. Apparently nothing serious, just day to day. So we will not get Montour versus Maroon <laughs> round two. That won't happen. Maybe in the parking lot. May, I mean, hey, lot, you, never you never know. know. But never know. Uh, Verhege is back, and he's been a good addition for the Absolutely. Florida Panthers. Hornquist remains out, just so we're all up to date on yeah. the uh, lineup notes for those games. But, you know, I think people are sleeping on the Panthers a little bit. I think they're going to give the Bolts a real test. They have played very well for whatever reason yeah. against the Bolts. They just seem to match up well each. They're comfortable, for what, like you said. And, like, you know, Rupper, you know how it is. You played in the league. You were on a bunch of different teams. You were in a lot of rivalry games. In that division, it seems like the Florida Panthers, they don't want nothing to do with the Carolina Hurricanes. It's just a bad matchup for them. Yeah. But when they play the Tampa Bay Lightning, who you would think would be problematic as the defending Stanley Cup champions, and we know the roster they have, and Vasilevsky and Hedman and that whole group, they don't seem to mind at all. They enjoy that matchup. So for me, I think they've, they're getting what they want here, even if we think it's kind of crazy to want the defending champs in the first round. Yeah. Well, that you, you got that. You nailed that on uh, right on the head. It, it, as far as nobody in that division wants the Carolina Hurricanes. Stylistically, Carolina causes fits for both Tampa and the Florida Panthers. They they play a, a tenacious, all four lines rolling, coming at you. They play fast. They play at a pace I don't think those two teams can deal with. So 
Um, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. This is going to be one one of the many great storylines in the playoffs is the Carolina Hurricanes, but we also finally get to see this matchup between these two in the state of Florida. Yeah, I can't wait for that series, but let's move on to another thing that's at stake this evening. The President's Trophy is at stake, perhaps. Uh, it's still a race, I would say. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, with a win over the Colorado Avalanche, um, can not only clinch their division, but I believe the President's Trophy as well. So this is a big game, but Colorado, who's getting Nathan McKinnon back tonight, is going to look to beat Vegas tonight because if they do, they have a shot at winning the Honda West. So this will be a very competitive matchup tonight, Ege, between Vegas and Colorado. Yeah, and the President's Trophy uh, is, is valuable because you will have home ice throughout the postseason. Yeah. If you get it, so that's a that's a big plus, and it, and as Mike just talked about, for the Vegas Golden Knights, who could have as much, based on what Mike just said, 80 percent at some point down the road in their building, that could be a huge advantage. It's already an advantage for the Golden Knights playing in that building, even when they have it's half full. But if you can get to 80 percent, yeah. now you're talking about something that's much different. So uh, for Vegas, to me. They've earned it. They've been, as you pointed out, Jackie, all year long. They've had very few slides this season, even with injuries and different issues. They've been able to manage all that. They're the team, I think, that's in a great position to get it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. The one thing with the President's Trophy, it doesn't always mean playoff success. So <laughs> I think that that's Absolutely. something that, that, yeah, and uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think, you know, I remember – Back in 2011, I think Vancouver won the President's Trophy, and we were, I was with the Rangers, and we were right on their heels and, and kind of going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and then we just kind of fell out in the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, I, I feel like sometimes the chase for that, mm -hmm. and then maybe when you accomplish it, I don't know, I haven't accomplished it, but maybe it feels like you've accomplished something, but you don't set out each season to win the President's Trophy. Yeah. It's to win in the playoffs. So, I don't know, maybe it's better if you – you get that close race and then you you lose out because you're still hungry. You know you haven't won anything yet. So, but it's it's still a pretty pretty sweet thing to uh, I'm sure say that you won and uh, were part of a team to win a president's. Yeah, there is a belief that there's a bit of a curse that comes along <laughs> with the president's <laughs> trophy. Yeah. Uh, but if Vegas wins tonight, they will clinch their third division title in just four seasons of existence, which is pretty wow. impressive for a team yeah. that just entered the league four years ago. But how about this? The Carolina Hurricanes is going to sit a bunch of players tonight. Dougie Hamilton, Brett Pesci, Jacob Slavin, Stahl, Svechnikov, all sitting out for the season finale. So I don't think the Canes are too worried about that, the President's There you go. Trophy. I was just going to say, that tells you all you need to know about where teams feel about yeah. in the pecking order of things you want to win, right? They want to win the Stanley Cup. Everybody knows that. The President's Trophy is a nice thing. But in the end, we've had many President's Trophy winners not go on to win the Stanley Cup because it's just hard. Four series, and uh, you come through all kinds of different challenges, injuries. So uh, we'll see. But Carolina making a pretty good statement tonight. They may still win. Because Nashville might be in a position to rest guys as well. Right. But uh, at the end of the day, that's a statement right there that they're not too concerned about it. Yeah, 100% each. No, I, yeah, I think it's more important just be focused on the goal, right? What's down the road here, and that's the Stanley Cup playoffs. And uh, they're going to do what they can to rest their guys and have everybody ready. All right. Next uh, steak that we're throwing on the grill is <laughs> right the ship. So we're going to look at a team that maybe needs to figure some things out here in their final game or so uh, before entering a potential playoff series. So when you look at the playoff picture, Ege, is there a team that sort of stands out as one that needs to maybe just fine-tune a couple things? Uh, I think the New York Islanders, to me, stand out. Is it's, been a, it's been a little bit of a... You know, bumpy road? A, a bumpy, uh, thank you, Jackie. It's been a bumpy road indeed, I think. Now, they won against the Devils the other <laughs> night, but they had lost a couple against the Sabres, lost to the Devils prior to that, and they've struggled in their games against Washington and Boston in recent weeks, and earlier in the year they had problems with the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, for the Islanders, they go into Boston tonight. They had a good performance uh, the other night against the Devils. I think it's important for them to go into Boston tonight and really play well. Now, at the end of the day, we've seen this in all sports. They could play terrible tonight. you got several days off. We understand the playoffs unofficially could start on Saturday. Whenever they get started for the honors, they could be ready to go and, depending on the matchup, do really well. But I do think it would be, it'd be a good thing for them, Rupert, to go into Boston tonight 
and to play a really good game and get back to doing the things they need to do to be successful. I thought this team was going to win the division, and they went and got that trade done, right, with Kyle Palmieri and Travis Zajac, and things just haven't worked out. Not blaming the trade, just this team has been 5-6-2 and two since the trade deadline, and that's not good enough. So you, it's imperative that you go into the playoffs feeling good and confident about your game, and that's going to start against a good team. They teed off on the New York Rangers not long ago, but to beat the Boston Bruins the way the Bruins have been playing will go a long way.